This journey started in 2019, six years ago, but I didn't want just to make uh, lace. Uh, what I wanted was to understand what it takes to make uh, one from scratch. You know, try to give an answer to the question, how do they make the first lathe, the machine that makes everything? A lathe is an enabling machine. Without it, you can't make precision concentric mechanisms. And if you pause for a moment to think about it, it's hard not to be intrigued by that question. The man credited with inventing and building the first old metal lathe was Jacques de Vaucanson, a French inventor from the 1700s. Many parts of these machines were mostly built by hand. So, yeah, with patience, uh, care and the right techniques, uh, it is possible to manually build uh, precision parts. They did it, so why I can't? When I first began thinking about building my own lathe, uh, I knew nothing. I had no experience. Uh, yeah, I, I knew how to electronically control a CNC lathe, uh, but I had um, not much background in uh, mechanical engineering, not to mention I never ever used a lathe before. And it was especially during the making of the ways and other precision parts that I began to develop a peculiar sensitivity to invisible thickness. Dimensions even smaller than a human hair. That was the challenge, to make a, a solid, sturdy and reasonably precise lathe from scratch. Using nothing more than commercial steel bars an angle grinder, a dirty press uh, and uh, a bunch of uh, hand tools. It wasn't just about uh, making a lathe, it was about uh, revisiting how they did it. But with a modern goal, to build an electronically controlled machine. The only parts I had to be made externally were the spindle and a few big pieces of steel cut with a plasma cutter, which I don't have. A complex project like this can't avoid setbacks, and this one had plenty. And as the time passed, more and more pressing commitments took priority. It wasn't until last year that I found a few hours to work on one of the lead screws. Turning a long lead screw is a challenge in itself. The part that sticks out behind the lathe can start to oscillate badly and if it does, it can suddenly and brutally bend the screw. That would make for a really bad Wednesday, so I improvised a makeshift stand to limit the vibrations. It kind of worked, sort of. Eventually I managed to turn the part with satisfactory precision. I'll have to come back to this long screw later to finish the other end, hopefully with a better stabilization method. Fingers crossed! But today we're looking at another lead screw and the related parts that will go into the tailstock. Okay, this is not the correct tool for the job, but I didn't want to uh, wait for the arrival of the correct tool and uh, I thought to give it a try anyway. <laughs> not made for this job but anyway <laughs> now I have attempted to make a centered hole with the drill press but of course it didn't work <laughs> now I need a small boring bar for this 10 millimeter hole 
Of course, I don't have a tailstock yet, so I need something to make center holes, just enough to finish them properly on the drill press. I took this piece of square bar, bored a vertical hole through it, and added three threaded holes to hold a 10mm bit. Then, using a 12 by 13 mm bar held on the turret, I aligned the board square bar with a 10 mm round bar in the chuck. Next, uh, they had to be welded together, so I protected the lathe with leather and rugs. I also connected a wire between the two parts to be welded, so the current wouldn't risk flowing through the spindles or bearings or the ways and damaging them. I don't think the final alignment is uh, super precise, but apparently it's more than good enough for the job. Pretty nice. Now it's necessary a hole here. All right. All the holes in place. And the part is ready. And the piece is finished. Yeah, the bearing will go inside here. Of course, it needs to be pressed. And uh, here we have the holes. Okay. Let me go on top of this. So I need a uh, 300 millimeters of this screw. So let's cut this here. Since the lid screws on the axis are in place yet, everything has to be done manually, adjusting the carriage by hand, locking it at the right diameter, and gently tapping it to fit the tool toward the chuck. I don't know if that's how they did it back then, but it works. I've been able to reach precision diameters within less than a tenth of a millimeter and with emery paper fine-tuned them down to the hundreds.
for this is the finished screw mm, it could be better <laughs> let's try to reassemble everything this pin goes here okay this one goes here this part goes here this one here this here all right so far so good this go here but this must be pressed no and then this part here all right I can't I can't mount this uh, right now because this must be welded I almost forgot to attach the pin that uh, is meant to push the tool. Likewise with the ways, when I finish the first one, I use it along with a half complete carriage to machine the second, keeping it parallel. This time the partially completed lathe was used to turn its own parts. So in a way you could say the lathe is building itself. With each new part the machine becomes more capable and honestly after so much time and so many setbacks I can't wait to see the moment it finally becomes fully operational. Just like many of you are and eager to see it running. So the next video will be about finishing the test stock. After that we'll see the lid screws for the axis in place along with the motors. But that will be another topic for other videos in the future. From now on till September, only one video per month will be up, maybe one or two more. And then from September, the normal schedule will start again. So for now, that's all folks. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.